Andrew here and happy Valentine's Day. I hope all of you are showing your love and appreciation for all those you care about. And what better way to celebrate Valentine's Day than to talk about a succubus. In this case, the fun-loving succubus known as Morgan from Darkstalkers. And I feel that's pretty appropriate since Darkstalkers is a series that could use more love. For those who don't know, Darkstalkers is a fighting game franchise made by Capcom that has gotten quite a bit of love over the years. But unfortunately, Capcom hasn't really done much with it aside from guest appearances, cameos, and costumes in their other franchises. Which is a shame since I would love to see the series come back and and i know a lot of other people want that too in fact the first time that i even heard about um dark stalkers was from marvel vs. capcom 3 when i first saw morgan felicia and sienko and ever since then i've always been interested in like what dark stalkers was and it was just by those three characters just how they looked how they played on screen they always just seemed to interests me and ever since then i've kind of been a fan of darkstalkers so much so that i got darkstalkers resurrection and i've also wanted action figures of them which was pretty hard to do back then since there wasn't really any darkstalker figures in fact the line known for making the um six inch street fighter figures soda was supposed to make their own Darkstalkers figures, but for one reason or another, that never happened. But we did get to see quite a few prototypes of what they might have looked like, that being Dimitri, D, and even Morgan and Lilith. And I'm going to admit, um, Morgan looks, <laughs> she looks the weirdest. It's like they tried to capture how she looks in the games, but it just never really worked out. And recently, um, Storm Collectibles has made their own Darkstalker figure dark stalker figures that being dimitri and a prototype of morgan but we haven't really seen much so i do hope morgan comes out but ever since then i wanted to make my own six inch morgan figure and it wasn't until recently where i saw two amazing morgan figures done by um strange planet customs and comic customs where i decided to make my own they make really good customs and i suggest you um go check out their work i'll leave links to their um accounts in the description so with that let's get into the work in progress of how i made my own morgan custom so when it comes to the work in progress the base figure i use is actually made of two figures that being a marvel legends shikla i think that's how you pronounce it and a marvel legends beetle and the reason i did this was because one in terms of the chest i think i used the marvel legends shikla for something else so the beetle chest was all i had and two it's because i wanted to make sure there was no like paint difference or rub on the legs because in terms of Morgan's design, sometimes the colors will change depending on who draws her. So if one part of her design is purple in one drawing, then somebody else can make it a lighter purple or even pink in another. So as you'll see, as I talk about the work in progress, I did kind of use different um, reference pictures for what like design I wanted, but the main one comes from this picture, which as far as I know, it was supposed to be used for a statue. So that's what I went with. And as you can see, I have her standing next to Chun Li to show a bit of a height difference since Morgan is supposed to be a bit taller, probably because of the heels. And all I really did at first was basic sculpting. I sculpted the chest because obviously, and I sculpted around the hips. And that's really all I did at first. Um, not too much, and then after that, it was pretty much jumping straight into painting, which probably wasn't the best idea, as you'll see, but I didn't realize how difficult this was going to get. So, what I did was I started with her, um, heart piece, which at first, uh, looked terrible, but after, you know, working it out a bit, I did get it to be a bit bigger and a bit more accurate. And you can see that I also started drawing where I was going to um make her unitard sit i'm not sure i think it's called a unitard and the reason i did that was because i just wanted it to be symmetrical and i didn't want it to look off so after i painted that i actually started working on the bats that go on her legs and the way i did this was i i drew a bat to the best of my abilities and cut it out and then i pretty much kept making bats until i had enough and then i painted all of them a kind of dark purple and i pretty much glued them onto the legs and i wanted to make sure that they stuck on so that they didn't peel off or anything when i moved the legs around or you know i my finger rubbed off 
rubbed off on it. Basic stuff. And so after a bit more painting and stuff, um, I actually started working on the wings, which was probably the hardest part because I wasn't sure what I wanted to do with the wings. But what I ended up doing was uh, making them articulated. And the way I did that was similar to the bats. I drew out a template of how I wanted the wings to look. And then I glued them onto a piece of fab. Well, I didn't glue the, <laughs> the template. What I did was I cut out the template and traced it on a piece of fabric. Then I cut that out. And then I used wire, glued it on, and then glued on more wire to make the you know articulation a bit more fluid as you can see here um this is what the inside looked like for the most part and then after that i glued on a kind of like a cover piece that was black because the first piece was mostly just to get the articulation there to get the wire there so i glued on a black piece and then glued on a purple piece for the inside and then I pretty much drew or colored in the, um, what is it? <laughs> I pretty much um, colored in the black on the front so that it would look right. And it was a bit like, it was a bit of a trial and error thing, but I think for the most part, it came out pretty well. And you'll see that um, the wings are in, are in fact articulated. And I'm really happy about that. And there's also the wings on the head, which were, a bit easier since all I really did was I took a bit of cardboard and a toothpick, made a template, and then glued it onto the um, toothpick and then colored it. Pretty simple since, you know, I don't think those are going to be articulated. And then after that, um, it was working on the head. And the process was a bit similar to how I made Chun-Li's head where, for the most part, I kept the same eyes and just used acetone to get rid of all the other stuff on top of it. And so I drew the um, outline of the eyes and then, you know, went through and colored them, made sure that it was symmetrical since I suck with eyes. But I think I've gotten better and I think this came out pretty well. And then it was working on the hair. If you see me make hair before, then you know that I used a technique used by doll customizers where you take yarn and cut it, glue it. Well, not glue it. You take yarn, you cut it, tie it to a hanger, and brush it out. And that's how you make wefts. Pretty simple. I had, I suggest looking up a tutorial if, to go into more detail. And after that, all I really did was glue it onto the head. And this was probably the hardest part. Because not only was just getting the hair to look right difficult. It's also because I had to work around the bat wings. Um, you know, because they... Like, they, they're pretty much coming out of her head. I always thought that the bat wings were like a headband that Morgan wears, but no, they just seem to be sticking out of her head. So working around that was pretty difficult, but I got it to where it looked right, and after giving her a bit of a haircut, the figure was finally finished. So yeah, a bit of a challenge working on Morgan, but I think I set out to do everything I wanted, the articulated wings, the hair. I think it all came together pretty well. So with that, let's get into the general talking points of the figure. And here we have the completed Morgan figure. And while I really do like how it came out, there were so many problems that I ran into while making it that it kind of got annoying. Not like super annoying, like where I didn't want to complete it, but just things that were already done that I had to go over and do again. And we'll get into some of those once we actually talk about the figure, starting with her head, which is probably where a lot of the problems came in for me. Um, for one, the um, paint that I used for the flesh, for some reason, it just didn't really want to stay on that well. So I had to repaint like her lower mouth like twice after the original paint was done because it just didn't want to stay on. But after the third and final time, I was able to get this. And again, I think it looks pretty good. One thing about the um, expression that I would probably change is how her eyes are done. While I really do like how these eyes came out, I feel like um, they kind of give off a more happy look than the like playful, seductive look that Morgan is usually known for. But I still think this looks pretty well. It's probably just something I would have done differently. And the bat, the head wings, um, those are in pretty tight as you can see. 
which was probably another problem because those were honestly really hard to get in like you know fit into the head and it also didn't help that i had to do it um around the hair because that was a nightmare speaking of the hair um as you can see it's made out of uh yarn and like i said in the work in progress she goes through a lot of different color palettes in terms of like what her outfit looks like or what her hair looks like so that's why i went with kind of like this um light light heel i'm gonna say and i think it looks pretty good another thing is that the bangs didn't want to stay down so i had to glue them which doesn't bother me too much since now they actually stay down pretty well but yeah few problems that i ran into while completing the figure but overall i think it was worth it and as you can see for the body pretty simple um the heart um i'm not sure if i made it too big or not but i think it's actually a pretty good size my camera can focus thank you and once again these were pretty hard to put on but as you can see they don't really get in the way of her arms um we're gonna get to the wings in a second but another thing i want to talk about is the bats on her leggings or i'm not sure what you would call these tights leggings i'm not sure but they are kind of hard to see on camera but i'm pretty sure you can at least see the outline of them um if there was one thing i would do i would probably add a few more since again depending on who draws morgan she either has like multiple bats or like a few big ones so i think i could have added in one more bat on each leg just to make it look more you know more like how morgan was originally drawn now on to these huge wings um they're probably my favorite part of the figure since as i as i explained in the work in progress i wanted these to be articulated and i think i was able to pull that off pretty well so i will attach the figure here just to make it easier and as you can see they can go up and down and they can bend pretty much all the way around and they can even fold in for a more relaxed um, wing look. But I do like to have them spread out just to fully show them off. And now that I'm talking about the wing articulation, let's talk about the actual figure's articulation. The head can go up and down slightly. And it can go side to side. Uh, I'll just detach it like that. The arms can go forward that much without this running in the way. They can go back, but the wings do kind of get in the way along with the um, white part around here. They can go out to the side pretty well, and this doesn't really get in the way all too much. She has an elbow bend and a swivel, and I will reattach her lower body now. She has a diaphragm joint, so it can go forward, back, pretty much all the way around. There's a swivel side to side. Um, pretty good articulation in the diaphragm joint, so you can get her into a lot of cool flying poses. The legs can go out pretty far, and they can also go back. They can go out to the side, and she has a thigh swivel. She has double jointed knees. She has somewhat of a boot swivel down here. As you can see, it doesn't really move all that much, but it is there. And yeah, the, the ankle can go up and down and it can pivot, but it is kind of hard, which also goes for her just standing normally. It's also pretty hard to do since she's wearing heels. I'm honestly surprised she didn't fall over while I was doing any of that stuff. But yeah, overall, I say the figure is quite a success. I wasn't really sure how well I was going to pull off Morgan, but I think for the most part, aside from the few problems I ran into and a few things I would change, I'd say it's a, I say it's a success. I can't talk. And as you can see, I will just put her next to the other Capcom characters in the back. So as you can see, she's standing in front of Dante, my custom Dante figure, my custom um, Chris from Resident Evil, Chun-Li, you can see X over, I'm uh, not X, Zero over here, X, and um, Jury. And I'd say she fits in pretty well with this um, little selection of Capcom figures I have so far. I do have more, but I didn't want to crowd my little work 
um, place here with the figures since I want the main focus to be Morgan. But yeah, I think she fits in pretty well. Um, she's a bit taller than Chun-Li here and even Jury, but she doesn't look out of place with either of them and she definitely doesn't look out of place with the rest of them. So I'm really happy about that. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, I hope you guys have a, a happy Valentine's Day. Hopefully I'll be able to get this out on Valentine's Day and if I do, that'll be a win for me. But yeah, overall, I hope you guys enjoy and you stay tuned for some more videos that I have coming out. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. You bitch, you should have expected it. Never care for forgiveness. I know I'll always be excellent. So yeah, I'm a perfectionist. That's why I'm the best at it. The power in me is infinite, along with my intelligence. To me, nobody's innocent. I'll show y'all where heaven is. That's part of why I did it, because now I'm letting the devil in. Got the magic touch If you're rare specimen Then I might have a crush like oh, Yeah, for the rush But you're talking too much I can hear the whisper hush Like, like, that's her She a bad one Put a down stack Or get back She a home run Hear the booming Hear the snap Who do I fear? None of them bad